On October 23rd, ISDA launched new fallbacks for derivatives reference to certain key interbank offered rates or IBORs. To be more specific, ISDA launched a supplement that will amend its standard definitions for interest rate derivatives to incorporate fallbacks for new IBOR derivatives entered into from January 25th, 2021. From that date, all new cleared and non-cleared derivatives that reference the definitions will include the fallbacks. Simultaneously, ISDA launched the IBOR fallbacks protocol, which enables firms to incorporate the fallbacks into their legacy non-cleared derivatives trades with other counterparties that adhere to the protocol. Those changes will also become effective on January 25th. More than a thousand entities have so far adhered to the protocol, but there are some misunderstandings among some firms about what the fallbacks are meant to do. To help tackle some of those misperceptions, I'm joined by Catherine Judaris, ISDA's general counsel. So Catherine, first, can you summarize what the new benchmark fallbacks are meant to do? Sure. Um, so the fallbacks are intended to be a safety net in case a key IBOR is no longer available while firms still have exposure to that rate. The fallbacks that were previously included in derivative contracts would require the calculation agent call up dealers and ask them to give estimates of what IBOR would have been if not for the disappearance of the rate. So dealers are unlikely to do this if an IBOR permanently ceases to exist and certainly not daily for the remaining tenor of all existing trades. So firms could end up in the uncertain situation of not having a clear backup rate. The new fallbacks are designed to avoid that potentially chaotic situation. They are based on robust risk-free rates, so firms would have certainty that a viable alternative would kick in if an IBOR ceases to exist, or in the case of LIBOR, that the UK FCA determines that the rate is no longer representative of the underlying market. Okay, so that's what they're meant to do. Let's turn the question around. What are they not meant for? So the new fallbacks are not intended to be a primary means of transition away from the IBORs themselves. So as the name suggests, they're a backup, a one size fits all approach that will mitigate the systemic impact of an IBOR cessation but they may not be, result in the best outcome for all market participants and all products. Uh, because it's a one size fits all approach, the transaction may be economically different, sometimes significantly different after the IBOR has been replaced by the fallback rate. Various regulators have recommended that firms implement robust fallbacks first. Then with that safety net in place, firms can use the remainder of 2021 to move forward with voluntary transition efforts that may result in better, more targeted outcomes, knowing that if they don't finish in time, a viable backup will automatically kick in. Not implementing new fallbacks that work in the event of an IBOR cessation is like jumping out of an airplane knowing your backup parachute is faulty. Right, so what should people keep in mind when deciding whether or not to implement the fallbacks? Um, a, a few things. I would say first uh, is that the new fallbacks for derivatives may well differ from the fallbacks used for cash instruments, if any. However, that's not necessarily a reason not to adopt the new fallbacks for derivatives. That difference already exists today. Standard fallbacks for derivatives and cash instruments have rarely, if ever, been exactly the same. Critically though, the existing fallbacks for derivatives won't work if an IBOR ceases to exist. So firms cannot predict with certainty what will happen for any transaction in that situation. And therefore uh, there may be different outcomes for different transactions. Uh, with the new derivative fallbacks in contrast, the methodology underlying the fallback rate is known in advance and any basis between cash products and derivatives is likely to be hedgeable. Uh, another thing to bear in mind is that all new derivative trades that reference ISDA's standard definitions entered into from January 25th of 2021 will include the new fallbacks unless parties specifically agree otherwise. If firms choose not to adhere to the protocol or otherwise bilaterally adopt the same terms, they will have that basis between their new and legacy derivative trades. 
Likewise, the major clearing houses have said they will adopt the new fallbacks for both new and existing cleared trades. So if a firm decides not to adopt the fallbacks for its non-cleared portfolio, it will diverge from its cleared positions. Uh, as previously mentioned, adopting the new derivative fallbacks mean a viable backup is in place for the entire portfolio. Firms can then spend the remaining time refining their positions through voluntary transition. So fallbacks and voluntary transition are very much meant to work in tandem. It's not either or. Thanks, Catherine. As mentioned, both the supplement and the protocol will come into effect on January 25th, 2021. If you'd like more information on fallbacks or if you'd like to access and adhere to the protocol, then please visit the ISDA website at www.isda.org.